In this video, you're gonna learn how Ableton Live can be very flexible in the moment during worship. First, you're gonna see some live action footage of our worship gathering with the screen share of Ableton Live, so you can kind of see what the end result of this is. And then afterwards, I'll give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set this up in your own Ableton Live session. If we haven't met yet, my name is Jake Goswell with churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our Ableton Live tutorials or any of our other content to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry. So what you're about to see is gonna be the last few bridges of the song, King of My Heart. That's my band playing this song at Mission Lakewood Church. And this is the third song in our set. This is where we want a little bit more space after this song before we transition to the next part of the service. And this is where we like to just have that flexibility to be able to speak, pray, exhort, and then refrain a part of the song. So you're going to see this happen uh, in Ableton Live and with the live action footage that we captured on a Sunday morning. And I'm going to put some timestamps below so you can skip through this video if you don't want to watch the whole thing. But I'm going to include the end of the song into the part where the pad and click is just looping and then going back into the tag or refrain we did of the bridge of the song to the end. And then after that, I'll give you the click by click tutorial on how to set this up.
we thank you for the sweet time of worship together as your body and join our voices in singing your praises and retelling the story, the good news of the gospel. And just continue to work through this time of worship, work in our hearts, open our hearts to, to hear what it is you want to speak to us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please. Now that you know what the end result of this is, I want to show you how to get this set up in your own Ableton Live session. So here is our full set list. We have five songs. King of My Heart is song number three. And I'm just going to zoom in here for you. So you just saw from about the end of this song here through this looping section, and then we went back to the bridge, did a couple of choruses and then the outro and then we have a little looping section too and then then we prayed and we were we were done with that first set of our worship service so what i'm going to do is i want to bring up these tracks just so you can see this a little bit better as i'm poking around my screen so these are all the backing tracks for king of my heart and this is the end result of how this is all set up in our ableton live set so you'll see we end the main song here and then in here we basically just copied and pasted the bridge to the end and then we took out uh, a couple extra bridges that were in there so this wasn't too long of a refrain of the end of the song and you'll notice if you're new to ableton live i've got markers tells me what part of the song we're in we got a tempo track we got the uh, click and guide tracks we've got the mp3 file the original recording then here we have our midi cues for pro presenter our midi cues for our lighting automation we have the pads right here and then down here these are all the backing tracks for the songs and you'll see we only have certain ones enabled for the, the sounds that we need in our band so what happens is we get to the end of this song um, and then what's going to happen is a click in the ambient pads are just looping here. Uh, once it gets to the end of this like two minutes, it would actually just go back to uh, this locator. It's blinking green. So I could speak or pray here, do whatever I want. Um, and then when I started singing the bridge low, we did that like two times. And then Ashton, who's running our tracks, knew that we wanted to bring in the rest of the tracks um, into the session. So what he did is he queued up this locator and that brings in the rest of the tracks, all the other cues and just gives, gives it a much bigger uh, sound and we can really experience that build uh, to its fullest extent again. And then we play through this whole section of the song and then we get to the outro and then it fades out. And then again, we just have the pad and the, uh, the click looping here uh, for that flexibility. I can pray however long I need to. And that concludes our first worship set of the morning. So let me go ahead and show you how to set this up. It only takes about a minute to do, sometimes less. So we decide on Sundays during rehearsal where we want to have those flexible moments. Maybe we would, we could decide ahead of time too, um, because for the most part, I think we know with the songs that we're singing what that might look at like. But you know, I just I just felt like okay, I want to definitely refrain back to the bridge of this song after after praying there uh, and in, engaging with the congregation because I just felt like we could really have a powerful moment there. And I think we did. Like everybody after that set, like was like, whoa, that was awesome. So. That's why that's why we do this type of thing is to be able to just you know refrain part of a song but still have that full feel of a, a big sound as well as some of the automation in there as well. So the first thing you need to do is find where do you want to start the part of the song that you're going to repeat. So for us, I knew it was going to be right here on measure 422. This is like the third time through uh, the bridge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select and copy the whole song uh, from there till the end. Uh, even though we're not going to play the whole song, but I'll show you what we'll do here. And then I need to make sure I have my section of looping. So let me just move that back here for now. Ignore all this stuff. Pretend like this stuff isn't here. Um, and we just have like this little looping section of pads at the end of the song. Then I'm just going to pick like any random spot I want. doesn't really matter um, right here. And I'm going to press command shift V. That's going to paste the tracks and it's going to paste time into my set list. So Ableton can paste time, which is really nice when you do things like this, because I can paste in things right here and it'll just extend the timeline without overlapping everything else um, within the set or, or, or messing with anything else that we have like way over here because we have all these other songs going on uh, so then I want to remove part of this section of the song because we felt like it would have been a little too long to go back to doing these bridges again at the end so what we're gonna do is cut those out so I'm gonna find the bridges 
and I like to just see the guide cues. It's usually the easiest way. So right here. So it goes into the bridge twice. So I'm just going to cut from this bridge to the outro out of the song here. So that is uh, 488. I'm getting blind these days. Can't even see these numbers. And then I'm going to press Command Shift X. And again, that's that. It's not only cutting the tracks out, but it's actually cutting time as well. So that's why the timeline just went whoop and it just got rid of all that space. Because watch, if I just press Command X, then there's all that space there. The tracks are gone, but I want to go Command Shift X and that gets rid of time. And then the song is done. So that's how we take a few seconds, maybe a minute or so on a Sunday to just add in that flexibility into our Ableton Live set list. And you can see it's pretty easy to do. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and you can just see what Ableton Live can do for your worship ministry. If you're interested in diving into Ableton Live and you really want to implement it in your ministry, go ahead and check out my free one hour long masterclass for worship leaders, uh, where you're just going to be introduced to my whole workflow. You'll have a much clearer picture of what you're looking at here and you'll understand what all the different parts of this are doing. Uh, and I also share my seven step process for leading worship with Ableton. Uh, if you're really serious about just learning everything you need to know about Ableton uh, to run a click, tracks, automate, lyrics and lighting and worship, uh, and you want some really in-depth and thorough step-by-step -step training, then you can also join Worship Leader School where I have my complete Lead Worship with Ableton program. So just click the links for those resources below this video to learn more. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, hit that thumbs up button and share it with your friends in ministry. You can check out some related videos right over here and don't forget to subscribe to the Church Front channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry.